A harbour seal has a small head like a dog's. It's very cute. People react the same as with a dog, even with a dog they don't know. They try to stroke the seal to interact with it and attract it to them. And a seal is curious and very agile in the water. It'll spin around and jump to mark its territory. The tourist will start spinning with the seal, and when the seal sees that, it marks its territory more and more. But people don't realize its territorial behavior, and the seal is saying this is his space and he'd like the diver to go away. But in fact, the diver understands the opposite. That often happens. Stephanie Piedeso has always been fascinated with the marine environment. After studying in France and the USA, she finally settled in Gaspesi, a particularly fine place for observing marine mammals. What fascinates me is the whole dynamic of the marine environment, to see how everything's interrelated. And the small bryozoa has its part to play just as much as the huge blue whale. It's also the habitat, all the mysteries that we don't yet understand. In the marine environment, there are so many things to discover. It's that world that fascinates me the most. There are 12 to 15 seals straight ahead. 12 to 15 seals ahead. In 2006, Stephanie joined the team at ROM, the Marine Mammals Observation Network, where she works as a biologist on the protection and conservation of the whales and seals of the St. Lawrence. The Marine Mammals Observation Network started as a project bringing together several people to observe marine mammals because there were stakeholders in the field who were worried about the problems facing marine mammals due to the number of tourists and the increase in human activity on the St. Lawrence. From there, we developed different research projects and education projects, raising awareness about marine mammals. It's because there's a seal right there. I'm being followed. He's under the kayak. We want to understand the nature of the observation activities at sea. That includes all the whale watching cruises, kayakers and divers who go out to see a bit of marine life. We want to see how those players interact on the water with the marine mammals. Among the species of marine mammals present in the St. Lawrence estuary and gulf, the harbour seal, by its behaviours and living habits, is particularly exposed to contact with humans, and that makes it vulnerable. In this region, we mainly find four species of seal, the harbour seal, the grey seal, the hooded seal and the harp seal. The harbour seal is the smallest species we have in the region, and it also has the smallest population. There are only 15 to 24,000 harbour seals in the St. Lawrence. It reproduces mainly on the shores, so it doesn't have the same dynamic at all as the other species. It's the only one that's really coastal and reproduces in the summer. On the shores of the St. Lawrence, there are several haul-out sites where the harbour seals gather in colonies in spring and summer to give birth to their pups, to rest and to reproduce. We realised that at the harbour seals haul-out site for reproducing at Piti Gaspe, there were a lot of visitors who came either on foot, by kayak, by boat or to dive. We wondered to what extent this traffic could affect the reproduction of the harbour seal in the short term and in the long term. 
From there, I approached Gwenael Bople at Université Laval. We wanted to set up a joint project with him looking at it from the scientific point of view, while we were looking at it from more the conservation point of view. So we might put some measures in place to protect that hall outside. Gwenaëlle Beaupré is a biologist and a professor in the Department of Biology at Université Laval. In 2008, he set up a long-term research program on the harbour seals in the St. Lawrence. There's been a whole evolution in the population of harbour seals in the history of Canada and Quebec. In particular, there's been a ban on hunting the species since 1975. It's the only species of seal with a hunting ban in Canada. And since they're not hunted, we had very little information on the status of the population. To date, very few studies have been carried out on harbour seals, because this species is found in smaller numbers than most other seal species. That means that its impact on commercial fish stocks is slight. In order to have better records of the state of the population in the St. Lawrence estuary, between May and July, Guanayel and his team mark the babies from that year. To find the animals, we mark them with a little hat on their head. The hats are numbered, so that means we can identify them more easily in the water. Some seals are also fitted with VHF transmitters and dive recorders stuck onto their skin. Harmless to the animals, these devices allow them to be identified more easily and provide important data for monitoring growth. The ones we want individually are 39, 8 and 25. Is that right? Kit 5. In total, we must have about 15 dive records on animals, some of which we need to recover and others that will leave a bit longer. On the left, there. Setting off in pursuit of a seal requires a lot of skill and caution. As the boat approaches, the seals go and hide among the rocks, making the boatman's task much more complicated. While Gwenael Beaupré and his team are looking for seal pups in the waters around the Bic Islands, about 300 kilometres away, Stephanie Piedeso takes advantage of low tide to go to the Petit Gaspé haul-out site. She's accompanied by Ray Couture, one of Gwenael's students taking part in the project. We have to cover the whole haul-out site inside half an hour before the tide comes in or else we could be trapped on the rocks. We don't want any tourists on the haul out because that would make the seals go back into the water and we can't count them. We also don't want any dive boats or kayaks because it's the same thing and if the seals go back in the water, we can't count them properly. The ideal window is fine weather, no waves, low tide, no one on the haul out site, and then we can do the count properly as today. Can you give me the exact time? We started at 1.41 p.m. Thanks. The majority of Ray's work is going to be monitoring behaviors of the seals. She'll sit on a rock for, let's say, four hours, and she'll observe all the seals' behaviors, regular behaviors. Or if there's an introduction of humans, she'll observe the seals' reactions in relation to the human approach. Her other job is also to do the counts. The idea of seal counts is to be able to compare seal numbers on the haul out site between one year and the next. We're trying to see if there are any trends. 
Is it a period of increase or are we in a cycle of decline on that haul outside? The harbour seal lives all year round in the St. Lawrence estuary. That's one of the reasons why studying it is so interesting. For biologist Mike Hamill, the harbour seal, like the beluga, is an excellent bioindicator as to the health of the St. Lawrence, because it lives for up to 30 years and is at the top of the food chain. The harbour seal is a resident. It's here all the year round, so it takes all its food and contaminants from here. So that gives us an indication of what's in our system here. The other thing is that there are harbour seals all over Canada, so some on the west coast and some on the east coast. So if we want to make comparisons with our populations to see if they're more polluted or less polluted, we can make those comparisons. An unusual characteristic of harbour seals is that the pups are able to swim as soon as they're born, whereas other seal species enter the water only after weaning. Obviously, in our work, we minimise our impact as much as possible. So, for example, we never go out to a colony two days running. We never do that, just so that we give them a bit of a rest. When we capture a pup, we make sure that the capture lasts no more than 15 minutes. Over 15 minutes, there could be a risk of abandonment, particularly in the first week. So we have to be really very careful not to disturb the mother-baby bond. He's a fine one too. We study pups in particular because it's a critical period in the animal's life. It spends four weeks accumulating its fat reserves. These animals, the pups, are born at about 10 kilograms, and they'll be weaned at about 25, 30 kilograms. 28.0. So that means that in four weeks, the pups put on between 20 and 25 kilograms, which is a considerable mass. But it's really important because that mass, that fat reserve, will allow them to survive in the six months or the year following their weaning, while they're in their juvenile phase. Do you want to go back to the water? It's really crucial to understand how the animals grow, and then to be able to say that with this rate of growth it has so many chances of surviving into the future. Therefore it has so many chances of reaching adulthood, and so many chances of being part of the future population, and producing young for the continued existence of the St. Lawrence population. The mother's found her baby. While Ray Couture continues counting the seals on the Petit Gaspé haul-out site, Stephanie takes advantage of the low tide to collect seal excrement, which will later be analysed. The idea of collecting excrement is to be able to measure the secretion of a hormone in the excrement, the corticosteroid hormone. It allows us to see the levels of stress in individuals. We want to measure whether the individuals that are exposed to humans on the haul-out site are more stressed than those on a haul-out where they're not exposed to humans. For that, we also take samples from another haul-out site, a control site, where there's no human presence at all. Using these two sites as our sample, we can compare to see if we find more stress in the animals on the haul-out site exposed to humans than in those that are not. We've done a good count. We've managed to count around 100 individuals in the area with around 25 to 30 pups. That's a good average. And we also managed to collect five excrement samples, which is very good. It's the best count we've had so far. It's a good number of samples. We're pleased with our count today. Even though the harbour seal population in the St. Lawrence estuary isn't endangered, some stakeholders in the field still consider it to be vulnerable. 
Several factors, including poaching, collisions with ships, and disturbance on haul-out sites, are threatening its integrity. Two days later, Gwenael Bouplay takes advantage of the low tide to make another trip to the Bic Islands. Mike Hamill, who has been marking harbour seals for several years, is collaborating with Gwenael in this study. Give me the weights, yes, thank you. Hi Mike. Hi, how are you? What are the numbers of animals like? It's going well for births. We've got about 50% more than last year. Last year we had 60 to 70 births, and this year we're around 100 births. Oh, 100? We have the impression today that the population has increased quite a lot. With the work we've done here several years ago, we used to capture 30 or 40 per year. And this year, Gwen is talking about capturing about a hundred. Huh. Well, that means the population has increased a lot in the last few years. Hey, He's over there. In 1975, the population was very small. People talked about 400 animals in the whole estuary. We now have that number on Bic Island alone. 93. We'll have to wait a while to have the precise results on the number and profusion of these animals on Bic, but also in the whole estuary. He's a bit lighter, 22.5, 23.0, sorry. Some results of the current studies won't be available for several years. But the data collected so far is already providing precious information on the health of the harbour seal population in the estuary. The level of BPC is very low in the population here in the estuary. The level of PCBs is quite high in the population here in the estuary. At first, we wanted to compare the seal with the beluga to see if we could use the seal as a model. But over time, we learnt that seals can probably digest or metabolize contaminants in a different way from belugas. So it maybe wasn't a good model from that point of view. So we can just look at the level of contaminants for this population here. The level of PCBs is higher, but if we compare it to the seals in Western Canada, the dioxin level is lower. So they're more contaminated in one sense, but less contaminated in another. With the aim of protecting the Petit Gaspé haul-out site, several stakeholders in the field have got together in order to manage the human activities that might have an impact on the mammals and their habitats. We decided to set up a coordinating group where several of us are working on the management of the Petit Gaspé haul-out site because we don't want it to be destroyed or deteriorated due to the presence of humans. Some seals are very curious. They want to try things. They're very bold with divers. They want to test the equipment. They want to see what flippers are, what a diver is. They'll tend to nibble at all the equipment to see what it is and what it's like. The problem is that they become used to humans. The young ones are less and less fearful. They go to divers out of curiosity, but logically, a seal in its real life must look after its primary biological functions. It shouldn't have anything to do with divers that aren't part of its normal biological cycle. It's a waste of time and of energy for the young seal. What we want is for the population to continue to reproduce without declining. 
The idea is more to look for solutions to benefit the hall outside without creating a disturbance. For example, putting in a raised viewing platform so people can observe without walking directly on the hall out. Maybe coming by kayak, but keeping at a distance to observe with binoculars and to study behaviours, etc. Since she's been working in the field of conservation, Stephanie Piedeso has observed a certain evolution in the mindsets of the different stakeholders. Efforts to raise awareness have been beneficial, but there's still room for improvement. People are more and more aware of environmental issues, and they're also aware that if you go and observe wildlife, you're in the wild, you're not in an aquarium. So the idea is to respect the animal that's in its own territory. Given that the public is aware of that, and there's more and more reporting, there's more and more popular awareness. The people in charge of cruises are also trying to turn their cruises into greener products. And they realize that by selling a greener product that's more environmentally respectful, they'll also attract a new clientele. When I started in biology, I didn't think at all about the impact that humans could have on the environment. It was the project characterizing sea activities that made me realize that humans, through their activities, could have a major impact on the life of this or that species. As I've developed, I've realized that it's not so much the animals that interest me as the whole ecosystem. You realize that it's all very well to want to protect an animal, but there's no point if you don't protect its habitat. <laughs> 